Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about setters and getters. So what are setters and getters? Setters and getters are a way of manipulating the private data within the class. So something to note about the private is that these two variables can only be accessed by the class itself. We as programmers cannot access the data directly. So if I go here and I say standard C out my shape dot length, well, let's look at what happens when we build. Uh oh, we cannot access the private member declared in class shape 2D. So we have no way of accessing the data directly. But there are situations where we must access the length and the width. We can do that by using something called a getter. And what getters do, again, to, to reinforce the concept, is that getters, what they'll do is that they will grab the private data and return it to us in a controlled manner. And we as the people who create the length, the I mean the getters for the class, we get to dictate how that will work. So here's how we go about declaring some getters. Okay, the I'd like to create a getter for the length. So here I'm creating what is called a method. A method is a function that belongs to the class, right? Functions that are independent, they don't belong to anything. They are called just functions. Here, these are functions that belong to a class. So we call them methods. So here to this method, what it will do is that it will return a double because I want to have a function that gets the length and returns it for me. And here I will say get length. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to put a constant semicolon here. I'll explain what this does when we implement our get length method. I will do the same for getting the width. And I'll have a method called get width. So the naming conventions are actually quite interesting. A lot of people like to say get and then the member of data that you like to get. But you might see something in the wild just so you might see something just like this. You might see just length, right, something like that, or you might, it might, the L might be capitalized, that kind of thing. A lot of people have different styles, but uh, getters, I mean, what they do is that they return or they let you have access to the private data. However, this access is controlled. So why don't we implement the getters now. Let's uh, actually I'll move this below the destructor. Yeah, so we have our getters. They're below the destructor. So here now, what I'll do is I'll start implementing the getters. So similar to the function, I need to type out the output type. However, I need to tell the computer again that this belongs to the shape 2d class so I see how this is a little bit different I'm gonna do get length first and I'm gonna have the const oops const okay so here here this line is very important here I have get length and instead of it being an independent function where it's not bound to a class or anything else, I leave it like this. I would get rid of the shape 2D and it would be an independent class, so, right? This would be an independent class, absolutely independent. However, this is a method and this belongs to the shape 2D class. So I need to have the shape 2D colon colon. So that way now the computer knows, hey, this method get length, it's actually this one that's been declared here that's part of the shape 2D class. If this is not there, your computer is going to think that the get length is an independent function and is not part of the shape 2D class. So how does this work? Well, this is actually quite simple. All I'm going to do is I'm going to return length. 
one thought that you may have is like, this has got to be way too simple. I mean, right here, we're just getting the private data and that's really what it is. But one thing I like to talk about is this const keyword. So const means constant, meaning that, meaning that whatever variable that you put it in front of, which is typically put before variables, it can't change. However, when I use const in this context, I'm actually making this whole entire body of code constant. So whatever's highlighted here cannot change. It cannot change. And this is important because do I want my length uh, data, piece of data that belongs to the class? Do I want it to be changing unless I want it to? No, I don't want it to be inadvertently changed. And actually something for clarification, this data, since it belongs to the class, these are called attributes. So the length attribute is the length data member that belongs to the shape 2D class. Right, and I don't want this attribute to be changing at all unless I want it to. And here I'm going to have my double shape 2D for my get with. We'll say the const and we'll just return the width attribute. <clears throat> it's as simple as that, <laughs> believe it or not. But this allows us to exercise control on how the user or, or the programmer can access the data. Right, we don't, we don't trust everyone. We have some trust issues here. <laughs> so this really covers the getters for this class because we only have two attributes that belong to the shape 2D class, we only have two getters. If I had more, I would add getters if I'd like to. And again, this is really up to you. If you don't want the user to have access to width, for example, you don't have to provide a getter. But in this case, I'd like the user to have access to width and length. So I provide that here. And the next concept I'd like to talk about is setters. So setters, what they let you do is that they let you set the private data, meaning the attributes of the class, to a certain value. And even then, you can exercise control on what kind of values they can set it to. So here, we, we will declare our setters in the header file. And since they are setters, they're not going to return anything. And I'm going to say set length void set width. Right. There's no const keyword here because I want to keep, you know, stuff may change. I may have to do some transformations and some error checking on what the user can and cannot do. Right. And I have two setters for these two attributes here. And the idea is that I want the user to have the ab ability to set these to something, but I have control on what they can set them to. So here we'll go about implementing it. Here we have our getters. Now we will implement our setters. Shape 2D to let the compiler know that we are setting that this method belongs to the class and that this method is a method. So one thing that I like to highlight, and I made a mistake here, I say double length, and this should be double width. Right, so now let's save this. We go here. Now I need to put the input, the correct input, double length. So this is going to be similar to what I've done in my parameterized constructor. And actually, I think I can just copy the code for here. So if length is zero, right, then we want to set length to one because we're going to error check that. If length is less than one, we're gonna flip the sign so that way we can use it. And otherwise, if it's a positive number, we're going to use length. So I'll put that here. Not too bad. Now I'll do the same thing for the setter for width. And then I have to double width. This is going to be the same. But 
But one thing to notice is that here, this is the exact same code. So that's being used here. So I can just, I can replace this with set length, length. And here I'm going to be doing set with, with. Hey, this isn't too bad. So instead of having a repeat of code, what I can do is I can actually call the setter functions and I can have them set here. So I can reduce how much code I have and I can let these functions handle, handle all the problems here. Here, however, this should be interesting. I shouldn't have these as zero because in my set length and my set width, I have error checks to make sure that they're not zero. So I'll fix that and set them equal to one. What else? So here, actually, this looks a lot like a get length and a get width, right? It looks like I should be calling these methods from the shape class here. And actually, I will do that. Right, so now this looks cleaner and I'm letting my other functions take care of handling this without causing errors, which is pretty neat and shows the utility of this. In the next lecture, we'll be covering other miscellaneous methods and start completing uh, this Shape 2D class and kind of see how this works. This will also be when the next video where we will also start using our main program to run our code and to make sure that our shape class is starting to work. Thank you.